Data overload here on my 24 Silverado 1500 ZR2 3.0 Duramax diesel LZ0. Dang, that was a lot that I just threw at you. Now check out this dual pod that I have right here. This is the, the Bank Single Stealth Pod. That's for a single gauge. This was a pre-production piece that I was using on my prior truck. And now I just got this new 24. And we went ahead and upgraded right here. So if you follow along on all my videos, you have all the installation of how to do everything. And I just did one on how to install this single. So we're not gonna go in deep on how to install this because it was just, the wires were already there. So we're just gonna expand on that. We're going into the dual is installed. You can see the parameters are already there. However, I'm gonna completely change this. We're gonna to go to a five and a five setup. So everything's gonna change on there. I'll go in depth on uh, what settings I'm going with or parameters and why. And then we have a, this was a new stealth pod or excuse me, super gauge. And you can see the firmware was version 1.24, which is the current updated version. Uh, we have a beta that we're gonna go ahead and put in super easy. I'm gonna load it into this memory card. We're gonna plug it into each. Data Monster Super Gauge. I'm going to show you how to do the firmware update and then we're going to swap over all the parameters and we're going to go in deep on this. I'm excited. Let's get into it. Swapping of this was super easy because I already ran all the or the single wire up through before. So what I'm going to do is remove the Data Monster from the single stealth pod and we're going to go ahead and use the supplied five millimeter Allen key, unscrew the single and then we're going to screw in the dual pod set up here now the plugs are super easy to use because the new expansion gauge that i just got which is just the super gauge rather than the data monster if you don't know the difference between the two the data monster will record the super gauge will not record so that's why i went with uh, this so i can have both styles and so i could show you both now you just plug in the data monster up at top and then i'm going to use the supplied y harness and route that down and plug it into the new super gauge while it's also plugged in on the other end to the data monster. And there is one extra little connector left over in the back, and that could be used for the pedal monster, the Banks Derringer. You could piggyback all kinds of stuff on this. So there's definitely room to grow. I love that. So now once I get the gauges set in place, let's move on. All right, so right now what we're gonna do is I'm on a MacBook and uh, Windows PCs are essentially gonna be similar as in what you need to do, but you just need to open up the file drag all the components into your memory card and uh poof there you are all right we just undo uh the memory card here is the card that i have this came with my data monster and it's just a four gig gigabyte card but i'm gonna go ahead and take this card and we're gonna slip that into the bank's i dash all right with the sd card plugged in we're going to go ahead and go into settings go all the way down to the bottom until we see firmware update we're going go in there, primary. Obviously, it's verifying the file right now. It's going to go ahead and go through its update, and then we'll repeat the process for the super gauge. You can now see that we're version 124.7. That is a beta at this current time. All right, we're gonna let this fully boot up as it said success. So you can see version 1.24, version 124.7. Start data logging. That happened because I have this set to auto data log. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just hold this button down right here and that's gonna stop my data log. All right, I'm gonna pull out the card. Now, obviously this was the data monster. This one's a super gauge. Now I'm gonna plug it into the super gauge. It's doing the same thing, SD card ready. So we're gonna go ahead and just go over. And then we'll just go down to firmware update once again. We're gonna update that one. I'm gonna go to the top one because that was the one that I used before. Verifying file, and it's gonna go through the same process here. We can now see that the version number has changed. And that gauge is rebooting now. Both of them have rebooted. All right, we're going to go in deep now and we're going to change this to from a five or a, from a six to a five. They're both going to be five. So one thing that I forgot to mention in here that I'm going to jump right into before we get too far is which vehicle am I selecting? So vehicle selection is right here. D-Max LM2. Let me just mention that on the newer vehicles, the 22 and a half, 23, 24s. 
you want to select the D-Max LM2 option. Now there is another one up here for the 20 and 21, and those are for the 20 and 21 trucks. So the newer, um, newer trucks, 22 and a half, 23, 24, you want the D-Max LM2. You want that for the Tahoes and Suburbans and SUVs as well. We'll just jump right into a gauge layout. We want to go down to five gauge square is what I would like to do. And now, so you can see that completely changed. We've got a big single up top and then some smaller on the lower. All right, so we're gonna go into gauge selection. We're gonna change field one, category, temperature. I've selected EGT one. So that's gonna be my largest gauge up top. And you can see right there, that's very easy to see. Now let's go into field number two. And what I want there is engine coolant temp. This is gonna be my upper left on the smaller one. So temperature again, we're gonna to go to engine coolant temp right there. And then we're gonna go down to field three. Now this is gonna be the upper right of the lower. And I'm gonna set this as charge air cooler temp one. And we'll go in deeper on this once I get these set up in just a second here. So field four, this is gonna be my lower left. And this one we're gonna put engine oil temperature. So we're gonna go again on here, engine oil temp right there. Field five, this is gonna be my lower right now. And this one's gonna be charge air cooler temperature two. And uh, let me set this and then we'll go deeper into why I selected these. So there we go. Now we can save it as a custom page. It's perfectly fine as the way it is right now. And I'm always changing everything. So we're just gonna leave it as it is. And now we'll just go ahead and back out. There we go, we have all of our temperatures that I set. EGT1 right there is very clear to see. I'm gonna go ahead and rev it up a little bit. You can see the temperature climb just a little bit and you can see the little bar go. That's awesome because EGT is very important to watch because it actually will derate your engine if it hits a certain temperature. So as you're climbing up a grade, uh, the temperatures are typically going to be going up and they can only go so high. So once they hit, roughly 1300, degree, 1300 degrees, that's where it's gonna to start to pull a little bit of power from the engine. It's gonna pull fuel, increase air. It's just basically trying to save itself from melting down. So if I'm pulling a heavy load and I'm going up a hill and I can see that this is only at 900, then I know I'm perfectly fine. But if I see it going 900, 10, or 1000, 1100, 1200, we hit, we're climbing to 1300, I'm gonna to need to pull out a little bit. So that's why I like to have that right there. Engine coolant temp. Engine coolant temp is very important because yes, the engine needs to get up to temperature for everything to work. And then you also don't want it to overheat. So same thing with the EGT that I just explained. You don't want high engine coolant temps, which I think everybody knows that. Engine oil temps, now I have that set as well on the lower left because that's another thing I wanna watch. Now you do need the engine oil temperature to get up uh, in temperature. And 220 degrees is basically where it starts to burn off the water vapor and the deposits within there. Now, it's good to have 220 degrees, but now once you start climbing up, 275 degrees is the scary area because that's when the engine oil starts to break down if you're running conventional engine oil. Roughly 300 degrees is where synthetics starts to break down. Higher quality synthetics will be able to tolerate higher temperatures, but we won't go deep into that. But you don't wanna be cooking this engine oil temp. So if you're driving really hard and you see these temperatures climbing, then you know, okay, I'm driving too hard. Or if you're driving really hard and you see that these temperatures are not that bad, then by all means, you can continue driving really hard. Charge air cooler one, charge air cooler two. So one is where the air is entering into the charge air cooler, and then two is where it's exiting. So this is important because you want nice cool air going into the engine because the cooler, denser air that goes into the engine, the better everything's gonna work out. Now, with that being said, it's uh, it's been shown that roughly 158 degrees intake air temperature is where torque reduction really starts to come into play. So I'm gonna watch this because if it starts climbing towards 150-ish degrees, then I know we're, we're gonna start cooking, we're gonna start pulling uh, power from the vehicle and we don't want that. So that's why I like all these. Now let's go up to the top and what I wanna do is set the top up to be for my def. So we're gonna do the same setup here. We're gonna to go to gauge layout. We're gonna to go to the five gauge square. And you know what, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you the five, five gauge, just regular five gauge. And you'll see why I like this five gauge square better. So these are all just stacked. So you can do it however you want, obviously, but this is what I like. 
or what I'm going to currently try. I haven't actually done these five gauge square. Look how cool that looks. Super neat. So why that's green and that one's blue? I don't know, but we can change that. That's the cool thing about this gauge. So we can go into, uh, let's actually go down to settings and we can find out layout theme colors, bar graph green right there. So that's, that one's blue. So you think it's that blue? No, I think it's like a light blue. Is it light blue? I think it's light blue. All right. So now super easy to make that color change. Look at that. Now we match light blue, light blue. So that's uh, that bar graph will go up with the, with the number there. So we're going to go up to gauge selection right here. Now what I want up on top is def level. So we're going to go into emissions and we're going to go to def fluid level right there. So that's going to give our def layout right there. 82% is what we're currently at. Now you'll notice on the gauge here, and I think it's a GM system, not necessarily a gauge problem, but as you're driving, it'll fluctuate down to zero, drop to zero. It's just the way that the level works. That's happened on all of my trucks. So don't be worried if you see that. So what I want to do now is work on field two. Again, that's this upper left. And what I want on that one is my regen percentage. That's a big one. Everybody likes to wonder where that is. And we're going to pull it up. So with this update, the 1.247 or one, whatever it is, my beta, it added right here, the DPF soot load percent. Now I'm not going to go with that, but I do like, I want to see what that looks like. I have not used that. So there we go. We're at 63 soot load percent. Now what I normally do for that one, which I think is going to tell me the same thing is a uh, regen trigger and that's going to oops i'm getting crazy here 74 percent so we need to look more into what the soot load versus regen percentage is but in my usage i've always used the regen percentage and as it climbs closer to 100 percent then that's when you know you're getting closer to a regen that's going to be taking place and i try to control my driving habits with the regen so that way I have a full burn regen on there. All right, so field three, we're upper right on this one. We're gonna go ahead and do regen on or off. So that tells me once you hit 100%, that doesn't mean it's gonna automatically just click it on. So we want the DPF regen status to tell us if it's on or off. And right now it's off. So when we hit 100% and we're gonna continue driving, then I'll know that it's really in regen when that, when that changes over to on. So now we need to change these two lower ones, gauge selection, field four, that's the lower left. And we're gonna do, this is one that I have not watched before. Def concentration is just gonna tell us uh, well, the quality of it. So I guess we're gonna have that 32%. That's a, good, that's a good number to have right there. So if I see that that drops below 32%, then we know we got some crappy def. So that's good to have right there. We're gonna leave it at that. And, uh, or if it goes above 32%, then we know that that's bad. So now we're going to work on our lower right. And what this one's going to be is DPF distance or the uh, regen distance, essentially. So there's the average distance. Is that the one that I want? DPF regen status. That is the one I want. So we're just going to scroll through here so you can see. There is a lot of stuff in here that they have for us. All right, so average time between uh, regen right there. And now you're going to see it's a zero because this is a brand new truck, 456 miles on it right now. And we do not have a regen completed yet. And we're at 74%, so we're going to have one. I don't know, it's going to be a little while, 456 miles, and we only got to 74%. That's fantastic. Another cool feature that we have on these is the alerts option. So what I'm going to do is select EGT1 right here. We're going to go into alerts. We're going to alert high. And what I want to do is trigger that to come on. And so now you can see alert high is set to 1800. But what we want is 1300 degrees because as mentioned before, that's where we want to be notified. So what that's going to do is pop up an alert on there, letting you know when you hit 1300 degrees, that's going to tell you danger. In fact, what we should do is actually set this to 1250. So that way we know 
when we're coming up close. We're, we'll leave it at 1200. That's a good warning right there. So there we go. It's as easy as that. Engine coolant temperature, we can do the same as well. Alert high, enable. We're going to go on. Let's set that to, uh, let's call it 260 is going to be our danger zone. So once we hit 260, then it's going to alert us. Hey, watch out. Your engine coolant temperature is pretty hot. Engine oil temp, let's go ahead and do the same on that one. Alert high, enable, turn that on. And so now engine oil temperature, let's set that to, we're gonna leave 200, we're gonna set that to 260 as well. And there we go, easy as that. Those will pop up in the background with a flashing yellow. In fact, what I'll do right now is we can see engine oil temp is 160. So we're gonna go ahead and set this alert to let's set it to 160 how about that or we'll set it to 150 so that way it comes on and there we go there's our alert right there we've exceeded 150 and uh, it's flashing red and that yellow banner came on super cool you can't miss that i love it so let's change it back to what we needed at which is 260 there we go. All right, so just a reminder, this is the data log, and this one is just the super gauge, or the data monster, this one can data log. So what you can do is you can set up a manual trigger in here for data logging. And uh, basically what it'll do is, right here, it's under auto log, right there. We're gonna disable it, because I don't wanna log right now, but you just enable or disable, and that's going to start logging every time that you start the vehicle. Now, if you're, not having it log every time and you're about to go do something and you want it to log you just hold down the down button and it'll go ahead and start the log oh, i don't even have the sd card in there so let's go ahead and put that in there sd card ready so you can hold that button down the down arrow and it will start logging now when you have a log you can go and take it to your computer Banks has an awesome data log viewer where you can download it and you can look all of the information on there that you want to. And uh, you can go in and set whichever parameters you want on there to record. Now I just have it basically recording everything and then I go through this data. Now the one that I'm looking at right here is of a different person's truck where they were towing. And um, I still have to work on this one and go through it and see some, some things for a future video. How about this for a field of view, huh? Those gauges are super cool. The Stealth Pod, really, it sits stealth. Now, one thing I didn't go into was it comes in black. And my interior is black because it's a ZR2. So the ZR2 is black and the High Country is black. Everything else has different colors. And Banks offers some paint to go ahead and paint to match your gauge setup. And so make sure you get the paint when you order one of these. All of the links down below are going to be answering a lot of your questions on, well, which gauge do I want? Which gauge do I need to get? So this is the data monster. This is the super gauge. You can get either. And uh, you do need a starter gauge if you're gonna run a dual. And that's the one that comes with the OBD2 cable. And that's just quickly run down there. And then after that, you can get the piggyback gauge. And that gives you the Y splitter, which is what I just got on here. And again, part numbers are all down below. You can use my new Banks affiliate links provided down below. That definitely helps out the channel and helps us continue to do more with this awesome product.